A very good evening and welcome to Weekend Dialogue. Tonight on the show, we are going to discuss about talent management, succession planning and all about it. Uh, for that, we have with us the founder CEO of Senate joining us on Weekend Dialogue. Of course, we also have with us uh, Deloitte Southeast Asia Region uh, Human Capital Consulting Director uh, who has come to Sri Lanka all the way from Singapore. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to have you with us. But let me first uh, ask Mr. Sapramadu about Senate. You're the founder CEO, founded in 1997. I think you all are now present in 30 countries. What is your work? What is the success behind Senate so far? Yeah, so uh, as mentioned, we, we started the company in 1997, and our main focus was to focus on human resource management systems, HRIA systems. So during the last uh, 16 years, actually, we have grown the company from three employees to today to uh, close to about 500 employees. And we are in uh, 30 countries, mainly focusing on Asia PAC. Singapore uh, is our regional headquarters for Asia PAC, and then Africa, Middle East, and India. For us, we've been focusing on primarily on human resource management systems as well as mobile systems. On the human resource side, what we really do is provide an end-to-end -end integrated HR systems, mm -hmm. going from all your transactional HR to your strategic HR, where we are talking today about succession planning, talent management, and also analytics. Analytics being looking at and analyzing how your current data and making decisions mm -hmm. on that, what we call the business intelligence. So that's what we have been focusing on for the last uh, 16 years, and uh, we are very happy of the growth that we have had. Right. What is this uh, uh, collaboration with Deloitte that you yeah. have? So uh, uh, part of our ongoing process is mm -hmm. to see how we actually streamline the talent management, succession planning, and performance management. Mm -hmm. For that, we are collaborating with Deloitte to bring in their expertise on the area of talent management, succession planning, and the framework that's, that they will actually bring in from a consulting point mm -hmm. of view, as well as designing the structure for an organization. And then we will use the technology to be able to implement and execute that. Mm -hmm. Right. If I move on to talk to Mr. Mario Ferraro, who is joining us uh, during a very brief visit in Sri Lanka. So is this collaboration with uh, Senate that brings you to Sri Lanka, what is your company all about? And what do you intend to do with uh, Senate in Sri Lanka? Right. Well, Deloitte is um, recognized as one of the big four. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of the largest professional services organizations in the world with 200,000 employees. Right. And we provide services across um, various areas, including mm -hmm. audit, tax, financial advisory, enterprise risk management, and consulting. So human capital consulting uh, falls within the business consulting arm of Deloitte. Mm -hmm. Our mission is to help organizations design business strategies and business solutions, but very often the execution of these business strategies is entirely dependent on having the right people to execute on the ground the strategy every day. And in that context, we need to enable organizations to manage their talent, but also we need to enable the HR function to support the organization. And this is where HR technology comes into the picture and plays a very important role. Mm -hmm. So we are very happy to support Senate in this pursuit because we think that our service offerings are very complementary. Right. So how would you how would you work with Senate in future? Right. We have a clear distinction between helping organizations design strategies and frameworks mm -hmm. and then enabling the HR function to execute. And the technology infrastructure will be provided by Senate whereas all the framework design and consulting around that will be provided by Deloitte. Right. And if I move on to talk to Mr. Sapramadu, uh, do you believe that our managers are clearly focused on this talent management aspect as you intend to you know, bring this in a wider scale to Sri Lanka? Yeah, I think our managers are still, I think we are, we are still in, in the area of what we call transactional HR, mm -hmm. which is more on looking at what your day-to-day -day HR, whether mm -hmm. it's from your leave to loan to your payroll and stuff like that. But moving on to the strategic part of HR, looking at you know how do you really build a performance-driven culture in an organization, performance management is very important. And a lot of companies in Sri Lanka and in even the com countries that we are working, performance management is done because they want to do that, but it's not integrated as a holistic uh, talent management framework. 
which is important if you really want to grow your organization to the next level. Looking at your talent pipeline, looking at your succession plan, that's very important. So I, I think in from a Sri Lankan context, I think we are getting there, but I don't think we are there yet. Mm -hmm. So how does the uh, Senate uh, intend to bring in this human resource information systems to contribute to talent, man talent management within an organization? What would your uh, work primarily focus on? Yes, yeah, so what we, would like, what we would propose is that, you know, what we talked about, what Mario said before is that, um, first of all, before you start looking at the technology, you need to get the organization ready right. to be able to build uh, whether it's a performance management system or whether it's a, um, uh, talent management or uh, looking at a talent pipeline. So what we would work, I what would like to do is to work with companies um, like Deloitte to kind of uh, build that the initial part of the design of that process, the framework, and then we will actually map that to uh, workshops into the methodology that you know we are proposing to bring it into ready to be deployed as a performance management system or a talent management framework and a building your talent pipeline. Mm -hmm. So our thing is this is an end-to-end, -end, so we call it uh, the, the talent management framework into execution. So we will actually take it from, from the initial part up to building the whole pipeline for you. Right. If I move on to talk to uh, Mr. Ferrero, you might have something to add to this uh, in the Sri Lankan context to you, your, your uh, representing the South Asian region yeah. for Deloitte and of course your partnership with the uh, Senate in Sri Lanka. You, you probably have a very good idea of what Sri Lanka requires here. Uh, absolutely. And it is not uh, too different from what I see in other fast emerging economies. The HR function has often been relegated to being an administrative support function and it usually struggles to develop into a more strategic mm -hmm. uh, function and, and uh, to support the business objectives. I think technology has a big role to play in two ways. First of all, technology can help HR to uh, make it easier to perform some of those transactional tasks which very often are performed manually. Uh, which is very labor intensive and time consuming. All that time that is saved could be dedicated to, to more strategic pursuits. So the HR function can become better able to spend more time on strategic activities. The other way in which technology can help organizations and HR functions is to actually gather a lot of information that can be used for management reporting and analysis. And having those, having that ability to look deep into the data, derive insights as to what is working in the organization, what needs improvement, where are the performers, where are the future leaders. Mm -hmm. That's all strategic information that will certainly benefit the organization. And finally, technology uh, allows organizations to manage a workforce that is increasingly dispersed geographically. You know, as organizations move beyond their national boundaries, they expand internationally it becomes very difficult to manage employees who are not within the domestic boundaries of our country. Technology can certainly help organizations to work in virtual teams and to tap into the experience of employees and other resources that happen to be somewhere else. Right, I think Senate has a very good experience here working in 30 countries with employees spread across 30 countries. Uh, of course, let me also ask you about the Sri Lankan context here. In Sri Lanka, the HR aspect, the area of HR is, is still being recognized and there are challenges. How do you think we need to overcome this? Yeah, I think, you know, this is, this is very topical question about uh, from an HR standpoint because normally HR is actually a function they look at more from an administrative standpoint. They don't, I think what Mario said was very true. They don't look at it from a strategic standpoint. Mm -hmm. For me, HR, or we call the CHO, the uh, chief um, HR officer, should be actually reporting to the CEO mm -hmm. because end of the day, you know, your crown jewels are your employees. And if you know how to attract them, retain them, train them, and create future leaders, you are having a, a good pipeline built in. Mm -hmm. So in a concept, uh, what we called, you know, the end-to-end -end HR uh, system will help to bring your administrative part of HR 
to be automated so that your HR directors and HR managers now can start working on the strategic part of HR and work with the CEO or the senior uh, C, C levels to being able to bring that culture of what we call the performance driven organization mm -hmm. and help building your talent. Looking at what are the business challenges that are happening, whether it's internally, whether you're expanding within Sri Lanka or whether you're expanding out of Sri Lanka, what are the next group of people that you need to have been ready to take them into those levels. So that's what we provide. So to, to bring in this culture that you talk about, do you think we need a change in mindset? And many professionals, experts do mention that, you know, we need a wider representation of HR professionals in the boardroom. Your view. That's exactly what I'm saying. I think HR should be a boardroom. You know, they should be directly reporting to the CEO, then not to the other, maybe other uh, managers or other directors. Yes, but HR is definitely a boardroom because that's your, your, your core asset of an organization is no longer your machines and uh, uh, brick and mortar. Now it's more of your you know, human capital is what is the most mm -hmm. valuable. And, it, and it's something, and we have seen a lot of the progressive companies who have actually been able to bring this performance-driven culture is that HR drives that with the CEO. So it is a very, very core function, I would say, in an organization. Mario, maybe that's something you Anything can Anything you want to add yeah. to this? Uh, absolutely. I, I totally agree that HR and the business need to converge more. And two things need to happen. First of all, HR needs to evolve into a more strategic function. Mm -hmm. What that means, though, is that a lot of the HR leaders of today need to build and acquire new capabilities because many of them were hired with the expectation that they will just do administrative work. Mm -hmm. So they will need to really develop themselves and develop those abilities to act as strategic advisors uh, uh, to the business. At the same time, it's also important for the business line managers to recognize that they have a, a huge role to play in the management of talent. At the end of the day, they are the real human resources leaders. They lead their teams, their employees every day for eight to 10 hours a day and they are better able than anybody else to monitor performance, to provide guidance, to identify training needs, and to differentiate between the good performers and the bad performers. So line managers cannot um, devolve all responsibilities for talent management to HR. They need to play a very active role in the process. Right. If I may also ask you uh, for something that we can gain from other areas that you work in. You work in the South Asian region overlooking many other markets. but. Uh, tell us what we in Sri Lanka can uh, actually gain out of uh, what you've seen and what you actually uh, work with there. Right. I mean, what, what, what we are seeing uh, happening in many emerging economies is that the, the influx of many foreign players, many multinationals moving into emerging markets to capture the new middle class, emerging middle class, to capture new customers, and in the process of doing so, these multinationals are also trying to acquire the best talent. So they are creating some fierce competition for the best resources. And local organizations are finding that a lot of their key talent is being attracted by foreign multinationals. In order to do that, uh, to, to cope with this kind of change and this threat, local organizations need to recognize that it is important to develop retention mechanisms to identify and retain the critical professionals but also to plan for the possibility of losing some of them. Mm -hmm. And this is where succession planning becomes very important. We have seen that in many emerging markets, like Indonesia and Vietnam, for example, uh, some companies were completely unprepared for the fact that foreign players will come and poach all their best talent. And if, without having a succession plan in place, they could actually grind the business to a halt very quickly. Right, so I think uh, in, in Sri Lanka's context too, as we get in more investments as, as the country develops, uh, this would be very important. I think that's why uh, Senate is coming in with all these new uh, technical aspects into it. Correct, yeah. So that's why I think you know the new offering that we, we talk about, which we call the talent pipeline building, is part of your performance management, your succession plan, and then looking at how you build your talent pipeline to take your company to the Apart next Apart from this, any other future plans finally, Mr. Sabramadu? Yeah, I think for us, I think you know, our, our main thing is to look at and how we expand it to more, more global, uh, to more international markets. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we, have, we will be actually expanding.